from the movie The Patsy. I lost my heart in a drive-in movie. Hello, Jer. Hey, Chris. How you doing tonight, Jer? You're calling us from the hotel. You're staying at downtown. That's right. How was opening night? It was incredible. The Cincinnati audience was absolutely incredible. How many standing O's did you get? Oh, they stand. Are you kidding? I did 10 minutes on hisses alone. They're still standing down there, aren't they? You bet. Well, Jerry, it's nice to talk to you. I'm Chris. And I'm Rob. And together we are the, the kings, kings of, of late night, night talk in the Queen City. And we're happy to have the king of comedy along on board tonight. Now, I just played that song, I Lost My Heart in a Drive-In Movie. From the yeah, Pat I heard it. Where'd you come up with that song? That's a wacky song. I took it out of uh, Sound of Music. Huh? What? Rogers and Hammerstein wrote it and threw it away. <laughs> so that wouldn't fit into Sound of Music, huh? Just pay attention, Chris, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Cincinnati so far? You've been here like a day, maybe a day and a half? I've always loved Cincinnati. I was here before you guys were an idea. What were you doing here then? Were you playing a show somewhere? I played at the Albi Theater. Really? And I stayed at the uh, Netherlands Plaza Hotel. I then worked at... Jimmy Brink's Lookout House in 1942. Then I played the Beverly Hills Country Club. That place is burned down now, you know. Yes, I know. Did you play there with Dean or on your own? I played there by myself. And how'd the show go? Did you get a big standing O? It was just incredible. But it's, that's the way it's been on the whole tour. Yeah. Now, have you been to Cincinnati since the 40s? Because a lot's changed since then. No, the last time I was here was with Dean. We played the Albee Theater in 1950. Oh, yeah? But the Cincinnati audiences have always been great with me, and I've had a marvelous time over the years. Now, back in the old days, when you and Dean were spreading love and joy and warmth and laughter all over the country, you guys were like rock stars traveling around, big, giant crowds of people coming out and screaming for you wherever you went. Were there a lot of groupies back then? Oh, yes, of course. You still get that in France and in uh, Europe, don't you? I get it in France, Newark, and Trenton. <laughs> what about in Cincinnati? I mean, are people flocking down to the hotel trying to steal your bed sheets and stuff? No, the people are very respectful here. Good. Very respectful. You know, we run a pretty tight ship around here. Yes, you do a good job, you guys. And I'll tell you what. While you're going on and doing your show, I'm going to listen to you as I fall into slumberland. I got a 7 o'clock production meeting tomorrow morning for Telethon 96. Really? I do that in between eight shows a week. How's so, the telethon coming along, by the way? What? How's the uh, MDA uh, coming along? How much money you've been raising? And is there a cure yet for muscular dystrophy? Well, we're not going to get into that discussion now, kids. That takes a long time to get into. It's too important to just throw away as a quick question. Well, WAIF, you know, is a public-operated station. We uh, come on here twice a year and hawk for money. Maybe we could raise a few bones for you tonight. Well, do something for crying out loud. People are watching you. Or at least listening. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Hey, Chris, it was nice talking to you, and Rob, I wish you both the best. Oh, what, uh, we have another question. One more quickie. This is uh, pretty uh, light and fluffy, so you can handle being a quick question. What is it? Something about May 4th? May 4th, are you doing a meet and greet before your show? I got a couple of freaks down here who want to come down and say hello and shake your hand, because you're a big-time celebrity. We'll talk about it. Hey, have you been to that place called Jonathan's? It's right down the street from the Aronoff Art Center, and they got pictures of Frank Sinatra on every wall. No, I haven't been there yet, but I'm sure they'll take me over. I'm sure they will, too. Check it out. Okay. Have you had any Cincinnati chili since you've been in town? What? 
Have you had any Cincinnati chili since you've been in town? No, not yet. Check out Gold Star or Skyline, man. It's good eating. Why do I have the feeling you guys are making a fortune on this call? <laughs> uh, we're not making... You're not... If you were from around here, you'd know the reputation of old WAIF down here. We're not making a fortune off nothing. Well... In fact, you, we're in the middle of pledge time right now, and we're trying to raise a few bones to well, keep the station... Well, let me tell you free. something. You guys are doing a great job, and it's nice to know that you've never lost on Star Search. Not yet. We're going on in a year or so. We got this act worked out where I act... I do this thing like I'm a one of those uh, ventriloquist puppets, and Rob holds me up and moves my lips, and I have to talk when he's drinking a glass of water. It should be terrific. We did it 40 years ago. Yeah, it's, re <laughs> it's really hysterical. You should see it. Okay. Now, we've been trying to spearhead this movement here to rename the Aronoff Center the Jerry Lewis Art Center because Senator Aronoff turned out he was kind of a shyster, like a lot of politicians can be. I, I mentioned it to you at the press conference this morning, in which case you replied, uh, what the hell would you want to name it after me for? And you went on to tell us uh, that maybe we should name it after a lo another local legend, Pete Rose. Because I believe he's one of the great sportsmen that ever lived. Tell us why you think he should be in the Hall of Fame again. Because he earned it. Good enough. He earned it. He did it on the field where it counted. That's right. He was a champion from day one till the end of, the, of his playing career. He was a champion and a great role model, and he was a great, great credit to Cincinnati, and people shouldn't forget that. Just like you do it on stage and you do it in the movies, and all anybody wants to talk about is the personal stuff, that stuff shouldn't matter. Pete did it between the lines where it counts, and you do it when the spotlight goes on. You bet, you bet, and he made Cincinnati very important in this country, and people shouldn't forget it. Jerry, in recent years, you've appeared in several smaller films like Funny Bones and Arizona Dreaming. Do you consciously look for smaller films anymore to take part in, or is it just the way films are marketed these days? No, I'm not looking for small films. I'm in a very, very big show, and I'm very happy about it, and I will be in it for the next four years. And the, your interview is over, you little cockers. Go to work. Okay, well, I just want to tell Chris something, that nothing Jerry Lewis is in is small. Thank you, Rob. It's you big time. Class. Are they going to make a movie of Damn Yankees? Yes, we're going to do it a year down the road. You know, uh, Who's going to be Lola? Who's going to be Lola? Lola, I think, will be Jack Palance. Cool. Now, what do you think of Eddie Murphy making a, doing a remake of your uh, Nutty Professor movie? I'm the executive producer. What should I think of it? You should probably think it's wonderful. But how's Eddie do it? I mean, does he really cut it? Eddie's doing wonderful. How's he do with Buddy Love? Because you got to be... He's just marvelous in the, sh in the film, and it's going to be great for him. Say goodnight, Chris. Good night, Chris. Good night, Rob. Hey, did you take a bath today? No, why? Is there one missing? <laughs> Later, Jer. Jerry Lewis on the Chris and Rob late night talk show. He thinks I'm yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> this is the Chris and Rob late night talk show, in which case I'm Chris and he's Rob, and the phone number is 749 1444. You can forget all that business about renaming the Aronoff Center after Jerry Lewis. We're going to try to get it renamed after Pete Rose. He called now. you a cocker. I am a cocker. What the hell's a cocker? Uh, it's one it's of those a dog, old. Isn't it? That goes back to the old Borscht days in the, in the mountains, the Borscht Mountains of New Jersey. Cocker Spaniel. No, I, I think Jerry makes a good point when he suggests uh, forget about naming the uh, Aronoff Center after him. He's only won dozens and dozens of awards, including being nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. And you but... know what else we learned tonight, Chris? Not to take questions from the peanut gallery. We take two questions from Scott and Kevin, the audience, and both questions made him mad. Both questions made him mad. Both questions made him mad. The one about the meet and greet, he basically told you to go to hell. And then the one about the small, you used the word small. How about independent? You ever heard the word independent? The que by, by saying that question, I meant smaller, better films. Artistically better. The Why didn't you say art house films or, or something? You said small. You're in trouble. Chris, I, ooh, listen. All right, we got to take a call. Let's Hello, go to Tony. Tony, you're on the air. Hey, guys, how you doing? What's, What's going on, Tony? Okay, man? I was just listening to your interview and they the king of comedy. All hail the king. How did you get in contact with the king of comedy? Well, it's a long, sordid tale. One thing sort of led to another. I had to call uh, George Burns the other day, but he wasn't around, so uh, his assistant hooked me up. So he isn't just with, with it, like a telethon with his kids or nothing. He's just like going on tour still. Right. He's doing the show. Damn Yankees. If you get a chance, go check it out. It's down at the uh, Aronoff Art Center, soon to be renamed the Pete Rose Art Center. I don't know. Maybe we should name a baseball stadium after Pete Rose. Or Jerry Lewis. 
Name we're getting the new ball field, the new Crosby Stadium. That's right. We're, we're, we're getting a new baseball stadium here in town. By the year 2000, it should be built, they say. The Reds will be playing in the Jerry Lewis uh, ball field. What do they call it? The Jerry Lewis ball field? The ball, the ball field's at Jerry Lewis. 